Damn, I don't know if anybody told you, bro, but, you know, I see you, man. I'm proud of you, man. You know what I mean? Keep grinding. Just keep grinding, bro. Like, what do you think? I see you, man. Stay you at it. I mean? it's, it's, it's crazy out here, man. There's nobody in your way but you. You know what I mean? That's you one know, of the ones. Doing your thing. Times. Yeah, you're doing your thing, man. You know what I mean? Head on the back, bro. You know what I mean? Pass this along. Um, you know, share this with people that you think need to hear this, man. That You know what I mean? Is that motivation... She really motivation. work. Motivation. <laughs> Yo. Hey, welcome Yo. to Hidden Hands, man. Let's let's get into it. It's Cruz here. My man Trav with me. What's As up, As always, Trav? what's good? What it do? What it do? How you feeling today, Cruz? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, man. Yo, how, what do you think about them type of... I be, you know, getting lost. You know, we get in our wormhole. We be in reels and we be on TikTok. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have good friends of mine that be sending me these messages. Um... I appreciate them when they come through, but it, it, I'd be stopping to think like, what the fuck is up with this? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is <laughs> What's going on? Fuck. What's going on with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, bro. I be seeing them things all the time, like the random, uh, I'm, uh, you're grinding, you're working hard. Yeah. No one sees it but you. <laughs> I be wondering like, does it work for certain people or not? Like, I feel it, like certain people. Be, I don't it, know. It, you We're know, like the motivational era. Popular, where that's, what, man. that's what everyone's selling. <laughs> They'd be running it's, through the woods and they stop in the creek, mm -hmm. and sit on that rock and be like, I seen hey, a dude man. jump out of a trash can, run into a grocery store, pour milk on his head, <laughs> and then cereal and tell us that we can do whatever we want to do in life. Shit is getting crazy out here, bro. I don't but know. Seriously, man, y'all can do whatever you want to do in life, man. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing, you know? Yeah. Let me let me ask you a question, man. What do you what do you think about accolades? Like when you're doing your thing, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of um, accolades under your belt. You got a lot of number one records, platinum records, gold records. Does that shit matter to you? Are you are you aiming for Grammys? Are you like, what type of person nah. are you with the shit? It's different for me because um, I, so when I was at Red Zone early in my career, mm -hmm. Tricky was winning Grammys after Grammy, right? So he would bring the Grammy board up there. And they would sit and talk to us and they would like educate us about how the Grammys work, mm -hmm. how how they vote and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what in and what it would be is it would be we all joined and then we could vote. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it, and, it, and so it kind of taught me how the structure of it goes to where it's kind of a, a, a industry um acknowledgement yeah. to a degree. Yeah. Speaking on the Grammys per se, right? Yeah. But so when it comes to like the getting awards and overall stuff like that. For me, I've never been, It's no, I can't lie, okay, there's a part of me that does want a Grammy, Yeah. right? Yeah. But it does not make a difference in my career with or without one, if that makes sense. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, mm -hmm. like, there are people who I have, that, who have a Grammy who have, who I have a significantly better career than, you know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. I could make, get paid more, I could have more work than, you know what I mean? So the Grammy... To me, it's more for like, I don't know, it's kind of like a personal thing. Like if you want, if that's something that you wanted to achieve, like for me. So for me, there's two sides to the the respect I've always wanted in music. Mm -hmm. It's the respect from the people that actually listen to music and it's respect for the people that make music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and those always kind of been kind of separate mm -hmm. because so the Grammys for me kind of goes into the acknowledgement from the people who make music. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because apparently, from what I've been told is... The way the way it is is that there's a a, a mono speaker. Now, I don't know how true this is, but this is what I've been told. Yeah, that there's a mono speaker that they sit around and they play in the mon and the mono speaker does not have a volume level mm -hmm. on it. So everything that they listen to, that they vote on for the Grammys, yeah, it's played at the same volume and it's played through mono mm -hmm. through a, a mono speaker, and they vote on the sonics and they vote on how it sounds, the clarity mm -hmm. and everything, and then and then that kind of encompasses them winning the Grammy. You know what I mean? So mm. when you see people like, I know Killer Mike won the, the best rap album. Yeah. And then years before that, like uh, Nas won the best rap album. And and it's kind of been this ongoing thing where the best rap album that has been won hasn't been necessarily connected to the streets or connected to where what's, who's necessarily the hottest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. Nas may win the best rap album, but Lil Baby may have been the hottest in the streets at the moment. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So and I think that comes from the the difference in who's who this is for you know what i mean like yeah. the recording academy is a is a group of peers who are into the recording and the sonics and the sound yeah. versus the just 
the overall hotness and just gauging, oh, we all ride into this, yeah. so this should have won a Grammy. Yeah, it yeah. don't necessarily work like that. Yeah. So I kind of always wanted to be with both. To be honest, I always wanted to connect to where people like genuinely love the music I make, and I actually gave something to um, to hip hop culture. Yeah. And then I also want a Grammy at some point. Right. Just, right. Just to have the trophy, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's, for sure. That's it. But how I win it also matters to me. And I think that yeah. could be a little different for some people because I don't want um, a Grammy in certain... I want it like I want it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I yeah, want to yeah. be... I want to walk on the stage. I right. don't want a certificate. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's not to knock the certificates. Yeah. But I think my self-esteem and what I've done... Fuck that certificate. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. that's not gonna that's not gonna satisfy yeah, me. I you want, want that trophy. Yeah, I want the trophy, man. Yeah. You know, I wanna step on that stage. Yeah, for sure. So um nah, I'm I mean, on my side, like I'm definitely I ain't gonna lie, like I've been just in, in coming up and following music and you know, the Grammys is like, you know, um, it's like the highest honor in, yeah. in music, especially for like producers, engineers, Definitely. things like that. So I've always been, I ain't gonna mm -hmm. lie, like I've, I want a trophy, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or a few trophies. Mm -hmm. But that's not what drives me, you know what I mean? Necessarily, like I don't, I don't get lost in it, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna lie, like I ain't checking for it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know. But so, does it? But does it matter how you get it? Like, like um, would you? Would you? If you would have got a. If you would have got a, a, a um, like a kind of an assisting, like if you were in an assisting position yeah. and you kind of stumbled into a Grammy, yeah. would it have felt? Would you feel nah, like nah, 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 you nah. want you want to act, the, nah, the way the, you get it kind of matters? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it yeah, kind of yeah. it kind of matters to you. You yeah, know what I mean? And sure. that's kind of that's kind of how I look at it. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. um, I just don't want just to be a part of something and then it just won a Grammy. I want to be a pivotal part of that. Which mm -hmm. won a Grammy. Exactly. You know? Be a key reason why that shit Yeah, won be a, a reason why it won yeah. a Grammy. Nah, you know, sure. that's, that's, yeah, for so sure. Shit. And, then, you know, even just the whole Grammy system, that's a whole other combo of just how that, how that yeah. system works and how, you know, there's so much controversy around them being disconnected with the culture yeah. and things like that. But like you said, it's a whole, yeah, it's like a whole system that you got to really be involved in and get around to understand it. And, you know, it's, 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 it's tricky, it's but. A, I just think that it's a, I think it's a fine line of like, you know, I've never been like, fuck the Grammys, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's just a fine line of like, it don't drive me, but yeah. I. Yeah. Now what I will say yeah, is I, awards, I would love a trophy. my perception of awards growing up was different and then and as it is now. Once I got older and learned, like I said, they brought the Grammy board. Uh, I, I joined the Grammy uh, committee right away like I was an assistant when they when they came you know what I mean yeah. so it was it's it's for me the Grammys was when I, I learned about it being in the industry yeah. I learned I learned more I wanted it more being in the industry more of like uh, a top dog like a championship ring kind of yeah, situation exactly. but growing up BT Awards uh, all the award shows was kind of similar to me it was yeah. just an award show it yeah. was like more for the entertainment yeah. more for seeing who's relevant and what's going on? And I know now they're coming with the well, they're starting up the two XL awards, XXL awards. It's, yeah. it's coming. Yeah, yeah. So that is kind of like, I think it's needed. I think it's gonna stop that conversation or or help with the conversation of oh, well, they're out of touch. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's not that they're not out of touch. Because when I watch, because I be thinking about it in music, right? We always get upset about oh, they're out of touch. They don't know the streets, or they don't know this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and they don't know who we were listening to. But when I but I love I like watching the Oscars as well, right? Mm -hmm. but when I watch the Oscars, I don't have a, a dog in a race in, in in movies, so I watch it as a as a pure fan and a pure mm -hmm. just just attached. Yeah, and I like learning about the movies and what's a, a a critically acclaimed movie and stuff like that. And then I'll go learn about those movies and I'll go watch them. So I think everything has its place. So there could be people who watch the Grammys and they don't know mm -hmm. everything about music and they learn about some stuff there and they mm -hmm. get put on some things there. So I don't think it's the end all be all that the Grammys need to come by into the culture and, and do it. So I think it's, it serves its purpose. I think the award shows like the two XL awards mm -hmm. that are coming. I think the BT awards, I think those still serve the purpose for the culture because you can't make them understand the culture. Even if they attempt to, mm -hmm. what if they don't 
understand it. Mm-hmm. Then we just we just be complaining. I think really it, it goes to involvement too. Like if you're not involved and you're not a voting member, you're not going to meetings, you're not trying mm-hmm. to um, sit down and talk to um, to the heads of the of, of the board. You know, um, it's never going to change. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's always going to continue. And they, you know, they they promote a lot of how they're trying to like move the culture forward and um, you know learning learning different things about what people's complaints are and making adjustments, you know, mm-hmm. based on things that are happening, like with AI happening, how they have to adjust to that and adapt and things like mm-hmm. that. But bottom line, and just like anything else, when it's a voting process, if you're not a voting member, if you're not involved and you're not sitting down and, you know, at these meetings when they're, when they're planning and strategizing, then it's kind of like, yeah, like what are we talking about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like even with, even, you know, when, uh, when big homie took the stage, when Jay took the stage, and he made that speech. I thought, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was like he took that moment of mm-hmm. him getting the accolade, getting the praise, and addressed the elephant in the room, right? Yeah. And he did it really well. But then it's like, where do we go from there, though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He mm-hmm. sparks the combo. He sparks this energy. But like now, now what? You know what I'm saying? Like how how is it gonna even get any better, or how's it gonna change based on some of the things he said, or some of the arguments that people have yeah. been having, like? Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and, it, and it's weird with, with Jay because Jay puts the quality into his music. He 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 does these things to where it's like if he if he's to advocate for the culture, is the culture doing the things in their music that the person advocating has done to get where he's done? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like if he's gonna take the time to make sure the mixes are right, make sure everything's right, make sure this stuff sounds sonically good, yeah. make sure that the topics, the content, everything is good. And then he comes and says, hey, y'all are treating my rappers wrong. Y'all are treating the... But then your rappers behind you yeah. ain't doing none of that shit. Yeah. It's kind of... A, it's, it's a weird thing to me. Nah, for sure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of segue into, you know, like, talking about Jay, talking about Grammys. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I definitely... You know, I want to get my brother Lenny, Lenny S, okay. um, in the combo. And really, I wanted to talk to Lenny more so about the art of of A and R because we we talked we touched on um early in the season like you know kind of where music is at just on a hold it's like you know quality level mm. you know um the lack of quality the sonics with producers and things like mm. that um and you know but I want to know from his perspective like where does the A and R come in you know yeah. what I'm saying like where where's the A and R at and all this like. You know, because the art of A&R has gotten a lot different in the age of social media. To my opinion, everything in the industry, is, every position is changing. Yeah. So if every position is changing and reconstructing, then the A&R position, it has to be, you know what I mean? Yeah, they got to be evolve. something. They got to evolve. Yeah, it's got to be something Yeah, they got to get there. creative. They got to get creative. Get it them. can't be the same but thing. What, what has happened is, like, in the age of social media, everybody's like, look at me. Yeah. Well, it's like that clip are they, you were, Are they putting the work in or are they just, you know what I mean? Really yeah, it's worried? like I think you had a clip that you had played for me. Yeah, the other oh, day nah, where you were talking about how the yeah, labels nah, won't Guru, sign anybody. Guru touched on it. Guru touched on it where he was like, uh, yeah, Guru, they, they won't sign like, anybody uh, unless you're. Oh, oh, unless you See, we're already about popping things. on it. Yeah, we talk, I'm talking about the clip where they where the guy was saying I forgot who what it was. They were saying yeah, they, no, they so won't sign anybody unless it's unless you're analytics already popping. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. if the A and R, if that changed. If if the NR used to be, if you used to get signed and we get you popping and we put you through artist development and the NR position was wrapped up in that, yeah. And now that's different. Now when we sign you, we want you to already be hot. We want you to already be popping, and it has to be different for the NR. Yeah, you can't get the same. That's just how I look at it. Nah, for sure. But um, but nah, I think you know, again, um, I think we're in an age of you know, look at me culture with social media. Um, is are people really putting the work in? Are they more focused on being being an artist themselves? So I definitely want to tap in with the legend, my brother. So we got my brother Lenny S in the building. Welcome to Hidden Hands, man. What's I, good, my brother? Hey, man, we chilling, we chilling, man, chilling. It's an honor to have you on. We've been trying to get you on for a while. You know, honored to be a guest. Yeah, man, we definitely appreciate you a lot, man. Um, man, how you feeling? I feel good, man. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? Working, pushing yeah. through, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Trying to survive, trying to keep a job. Bro, man, let's talk about it. So, you know, um, 
it's it's a crazy time, man. Real like uh very interesting. I'll say, you know, like like the year, the year has been uh very like low vibration, a lot of like crazy, crazy things happen in industry side, a lot of people losing gigs, a lot of things shifting, you know, a lot of adjustments to um all these different things like with AI and the change in the market, you know, um like uh we were just talking before you jumped on about um the A and R, you know what I'm saying? Because you're an amazing A and R. You've you know, uh, you done. I was. Some I tried. I tried. No, nah, I ain't gonna lie. Listen, uh, I'm I'm just talking about like your run was spectacular, mm -hmm. and and you know, out of everybody, you um you deserve you know the um your flowers and you know sure. and also you're more than valid to speak on the subject of kind of where the art of A and R is at today in the age of social media, um. And, you know, these guys having to pivot and, you know, get creative because a lot of shit changed since when you were, you know, doing your thing. Like a lot of yeah. things have changed with, you know, uh, like I said, just the way people engage with music, the way they, you know. Uh, so if you could just kind of speak on that just in general, like, you know, some of the challenges of the new a and and where you think kind of the culture is at as a whole. Yeah. I mean, look, man, I still do. Uh, I believe in A&R 100 percent. Right. I think mm. artists and repertoire is is essential and mm. is needed. Um, I don't think it's needed in the sense of the same traditional gatekeeping form. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like A&R play two sides. Like, I mean, obviously they played a, a, a talent uh, development, talent search, talent side. Yeah. And I, also, I feel like they play a gatekeeping side, which again, I, I stand on both sides of the gatekeeping, right? Because mm -hmm. when you have amazing people like Quincy Jones and Barry Gordy and L.A. Reid and, you know, J all these amazing people who were executives, A&Rs, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Gatekeeping was pretty damn good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, it, it has its both sides. But then also, I do feel like there's a downside to A&R gatekeeping because, like, you know, everybody doesn't know how to pick out talent as well as some of the people I just mentioned mm -hmm. and obviously a bunch of others. So I think A&R is important. I think it's necessary, but also I feel like almost anyone can be an A&R. When I say that, I mean, <laughs> if you have a really good ear, if you're, you know, if you're within the crew or within the organization, there's somebody who's like pulling out who has the best tracks. Mm -hmm. There's somebody pulling out who's the best new writer you know, there's somebody that's acknowledging and like discovering these, you know, music geniuses, whether they're producers, mm -hmm. writers, you know, co whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So, and that could be anybody. And I say that because I was scared to get into A&R when it first started because I thought I wasn't qualified because I didn't mm -hmm. have any, you know, proper uh, or, or, you know, proper schooling mm -hmm. and, or, or just like, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't work in an A&R department. Yeah. I just kind of got thrown in like, you're doing the streets is watching yeah. project. Right. Then. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But again, you know, I had great relationships and I had a decent ear, but, but my point is, I, I, I don't think it's a lost art. I think it's still necessary, but I don't think it's as, you know, nitpicky as like what we had before, where it's like, you know, you had to have these credentials and you had mm. to have signed a whole bunch of people because, mm -hmm. you know, the first person that comes to me and is like, yo, I know this kid named, I know this person named, you know, Uzi, who's super dope, or this girl named Ice Spice from the Bronx, who's mm -hmm. the person who acknowledges and can find good talent or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, hello, you're an A&R. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. It, it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's that simple, but it really is. If you bring a product, mm -hmm. and that product being an artist or a mm -hmm. producer or a writer to an organization, to a production company, a record label or whatever, and they like it and they want to sign it, you're an A&R. You know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. a talent scout. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that helped answer that, but it helps. That helps a lot. Something more specific, please let me know. It's a lot. There's a lot in there, and I and I definitely want to get into um, the thing you were talking about. I'm, I'm a, I know you got something. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just still, I'm still good. I was gonna ask a question, yeah, but yeah, yeah, give me one second. Go ahead, go ahead. You mentioned this gatekeeping. <laughs> like, you oh, I want to challenge. You. Yeah, 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 but you mentioned you mentioned gatekeeping. Um, mm -hmm. and can you elaborate on what you mean by gatekeeping? Because um, what I notice. Um, a lot more now, um, kind of in, like I say, kind of in our, in our era, um, gatekeeping 
that I've experienced kind of can get in the way of, um, yeah, of the possibilities of what, you know what I mean? Like if your artist right. is working on a project and you're gatekeeping in terms of like, we have our internal, um, we have our internal yeah, creatives or, or whatever yeah, the yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. So we don't need your, your records or, you know what I mean? Like we're good on all that or whatever the case, um, or, yeah. you know, um, being able to collaborate or have a couple artists work together and then, you know, they're just like, overprotective of their artists or whatever and who knows what could have right. came out of a certain collaboration or things like that so right. what is what is the what was you, what were you touching on when you when you met uh mentioned gatekeeping when i when i mentioned gatekeeping i mean it in the sense of um someone who's qualified right who has experience and qualified mm -hmm. um with experience and with credibility and uh also notoriety but credibility in people that they have put on prior to, mm -hmm. whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. Again, artist, rapper, singer, writer, producer, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I, there's, and what I mean by that, there's a good side of gatekeeping. People that genuinely want to see people on, that genuinely, you know, feel good and feel great and feel passionate about discovering talent and trying to help them get the best deal possible. That's the good gatekeeping. Now, mm -hmm. there is a negative side of gatekeeping that, a lot of people refer to mm -hmm. is the people like you are more so referring to that think that they know it all, mm -hmm. think that only oh, they have the answers mm -hmm. or they have the the style of record that you need to make in mm -hmm. order to be successful. Mm -hmm. Who think that they, you know, that they are pretty much, like I said, they're the answer to what needs to be out there. And mm -hmm. then that's in turn, right? That's stopping or halting or the credit, the, the creativity of what, Let's just say you guys are doing right. Yeah. Let's say both of y'all working on an album. Yeah. But y'all signed to the label. I signed y'all, but I'm you know one of the bad gatekeepers, and I'm just like, nah, you need to do this, or you need to do this with this girl who's singing on the hook because we need to go commercial and we need to have a hit. Like mm -hmm. those things don't mean anything. There are records that don't have uh, typically you know R and B commercial hook to go commercial mm -hmm. or hit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. In that sense, gatekeeping gets, you know, and then again, people having their own agenda, mm -hmm. people maybe not wanting to do things because of something personal. Like mm -hmm. you can't, all those layers have to be stripped. And that's what makes bad gatekeeping of, again, you know, yeah. ignorance, um, stubbornness, mm -hmm. um, you know, lack of creativity. Mm -hmm. The people that you find may be more creative than you. You know, you're just a portal. You're just a conduit. Right. For them to get, you can't gatekeep and stop that flow of amazing creativity mm -hmm. that may change music, that may change a sound, that may change, you know what I'm saying? By, yeah. by gatekeeping. So again, I, I feel like there's there's two sides. I always feel like I played on the on the positive side of gatekeeping where, you know, mm -hmm. I let the artist dictate what it is. I'm there to help. Mm -hmm. I'm there to assist. Mm -hmm. I'm there to support. Mm -hmm. And I'm there to, you know what I'm saying, advice, whatever the case, from my credibility, yep. from my experience. Mm -hmm. And my, you know what I'm saying? For whatever, you know, my experience in the business. Nah, for sure. No, nah, that's, that's, yeah. that covered it for sure. Cause I, I just, you know, I noticed that and there's, you know, there's gatekeeping in terms of, well, we have all these things tied to us. Like mm -hmm. it could just be a business gatekeeping. Like my producer yeah. signed to me. I'm working with this artist. I want to house the whole thing so that I could yep. be, and it, it's mm -hmm. like, it's greed based. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, we deal with it, man. Um, we deal with it. And while, and while that may make sense. Yeah. If there's a real, right. If, if, if Metro has a genuine connection with future or 21 mm -hmm. and they can make the whole album, that's amazing. That's For not, sure. For sure. that's not the, the one we're talking about where it's like, yeah, some people just are greedy, are selfish, mm -hmm. are gatekeeping and like, nah, there's my producer and yeah. they go do the album because yeah. you know, the money's going to them, the publisher's going to them, the credit's going to them, but they don't even know if that producer clicks with their artists or, right. the, you know what I'm saying, has a, a compatibility together exactly. that's going to make them, they don't know if they have the Dre Snoop, you know, combo. They don't know if they have the, right. you know, Puff Big, the whatever that is, you know what I'm saying, Mustard, what, Mustard and a hundred people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they don't know if they have those kind of connections that could come forth and bring out a great product. You know exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Going back to what you said about um A and Ring, um, it seems okay, so like we spoke about the clip that we were talking about yeah. earlier. Um, so it seems like labels now need you to 
kind of already have a buzz, be popping on the internet. Like you're gonna have some kind of fan base already going by the time you get an A and R, by the time you get a, get with a label and stuff, which is different than how it used to be. Um, so how does that change the job of an A and R if you're finding talent that's already popping? Good, good, good question. Because just to start off, like you said, right before the A and R was that person. The A and R was the person who discovered the artists mm -hmm. before they were popping, mm -hmm. when they were on the verge to maybe obviously it developing into something, you know, serious or, or big or whatever, whatever, uh, you know, adjective you want to use. The A&R was the person who went and sought out the talent and saw the vision before any average ear person can see it. So that was the original job of the A&R. Mm -hmm. We have the internet now, obviously, and we have, you know, social media, obviously, and we just have all these different platforms that can display that talent to the world without having to have, one person or one gatekeeper or one A&R or three A&Rs give their opinion. By the way, we're wrong. People, <laughs> everybody's wrong in music. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be the best in the game. There are people that, you know, I'm sure L.A. Reid passed on or, you know, Jimmy Iovine passed on. It, it happens every day. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean you don't have a good ear. You're not a good gatekeeper. It just means you, you're you off. Or it might not have been for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? person who signs... Taylor Swift, you know, may not be the, obviously the same person who signs, you know, little Nas X. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. everything isn't for everybody. Right. But to answer your question, it actually makes the A&R's job harder these days because they get to put their creativity, they get to put their art out, the artist, and have the people decide. And really, that's what you really want. Mm -hmm. When their fanship is growing, when their following is growing, people are listening to their music watching their videos, going to their shows, buying their merch. When you're getting all of those uh, things like solidified in your career and you're getting them, you know what I'm saying, sanctioned by actual people who are showing up, you don't really need the a and mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now the a and job is even harder. They have to find that person before they even attempt to put those things out if they want to survive in the entertainment business, right? Because mm -hmm. now... We don't, you don't need them. I don't need to wait. Why would I have to, there's, let's say there's 12 record labels. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to wait for these? First of all, the 12 record labels, only four and R's may be onto you. Mm -hmm. Out of those four, maybe two will like you. Out of the two, maybe one is going to want to sign you. That's if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. All of those stats I just named, that's if you're lucky, right? It's like the lotto. Mm -hmm. It's like going to the NBA. It's like, you're not, just because you're good doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get in. Exactly. So what I'm saying is, why would I want to wait on those few people, those A&Rs, those gatekeepers, in order to get validated by them to hope that they take me, think my art is good, take me into the, to their boss, to their record label, to then give me a contract, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? To put my music out mm -hmm. to the world. I could just put it out myself. Right. And people judge it for themselves. And mm -hmm. by the way, every day I get a new fan or every day I get more people that are engaged and that like my stuff, now I'm forcing you, the A&R, to come to me and I have the leverage now. Mm -hmm. I already got this much following. I already got this many plays. Mm -hmm. I already did these many shows. And I sold this much merch. <laughs> what are you going to give me that's going to help amplify or, you know what I'm saying, enhance what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. That's going to make me be like, okay, I'll sign with you guys and give up a percentage of what I built on my own. Right. You get it? Right. So the a &R's job is not as easy, to your point, as it used to be. Because Absolutely. the a &R before had the leverage because it was sort of like, yeah, you gotta gotta go through me to get that record deal. Where it's like, no, I don't mm -hmm. anymore. Right. You gotta be better than what you are. Mm -hmm. Whatever you were 15 years ago, you better be 10 times better now mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, acknowledge and recognize that talent before they make it on their own. That's real. Sorry for being long winded. No, no, no. Nah, nah, that was, nah, you gave, nah, nah, listen. You going crazy, man. You got you got all the knowledge. That's what we need, man. Cause like a lot of people. You know, the reason we even built this sort of platform, you know, and shout out to Canon and the Tomorrow family yeah. is is to dispel a lot of this misinformation. Because, you know, like we're in the age of, again, we're in the age of social media. You know, something comes out and the story turns into something and, it, you know, it could be based purely on on um, on false information and people run yeah. with it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. clickbait or whatever. People yeah. talking about the music industry 
um, you know, not having background and being mm-hmm. in this thing and having skin in the game. But oh, yeah, the teacher. Now they're, yeah, they're, everybody's teaching shit. They're the voice, the voice of the people all of a sudden. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Get a couple clicks and now they're. Yeah. So Everybody's it was a crazy a, time, man. It's yeah. a crazy time. Everybody so this is where we. Right now. It's, so this is where we're inspired. Like, yo, we're not gonna yeah. come on here and talk about turning knobs yeah. and mixing well, cause, records cause, because it's yeah. more. It's, it's more. It's and, you, and you could probably attest to this: the the position of the engineer and the position where the engineers come through is more than just pressing the button. We get to see so much of the industry, so much of the studio. We have relationships with the A and R's, the executives, the, yep. the producers, down to the songwriters, down to the new interns. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So. It's like in order so for us to talk about it and actually say the real, you know what I mean? Instead of just oh, turn it up here and and, and use the C L one B on this. <laughs> yeah, there's, what's, there's places such for vocal that. Chain. There's other places. You know, for that. we want to yeah. actually talk about the things that you know people can't really see or they don't really understand too much. Um, yeah. with, th- with that being said, we had a discussion, and I don't want to harp too much on the Usher point, but I just <laughs> been using him as an example, and I wish mm-hmm. I had another example because I'm sure there's plenty more, but. What do you think it is when these uh, legendary acts come out and the like Usher performed at the Super Bowl? He had the amazing rollout. Everything was hey. like everything was amazing. It's incredible. But it, the Great album show. debuted at at number two or number three on the Billboard, right? Number yeah. two. I so, think, I think so number three. Top five, say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was top five. But it wasn't number one. And mm-hmm. what do you think about that? Like when a, a legendary artist comes back like that and it seems to not do what it would have done in there. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't seem to. Well, wait, I, I thought that it was successful. What it was. I thought it, it was, was successful. Was... One of the one of the main things. One of the main things. Um. So, one of the main things too, just mm-hmm. in terms of like the whole way that it came together that that we had a, a discussion about was the actual uh, connectivity connectivity of the yep, music yep. itself sonically where it was at. Like you know, one of the one of the arguments Trav had was like, yo. There aren't many producers pushing the sound that forward. are pushing the sound forward that are newer producers. So like Usher had to go back to Tricky and them. He had to go back to you know some of the people mm-hmm. that Jermaine he, you know Jermaine and, and yeah. you know who are the new guys that could have pushed it forward and maybe made it. Yeah, but you yeah. feel like you feel, hold on, you feel like it was all a success. You don't feel like there was a lack of con- connectivity somewhere in there. I, I mean, personally, I didn't I didn't see. And, and again, I don't I don't you know what I mean. Yeah, I speak on. I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. I'm saying it looked like some success from where I'm standing. Yeah. Wise music yeah. out. Yeah. Incredible show. Yeah. You know, incredible residency. Yeah. You yeah. know, like everything with him is is still been to be in the game as long as he has. Right. You know, I mean, obviously one of the icons. It's for me. It's still accelerating. You know what I'm saying? Like it's still it still looks like it's, and which. People would usually think you're not. You know what I mean? When you're in the game over 10, 15, or, or hitting 20 years, whatever the case may be, they, you know, they think you kind of like will start to, and mm-hmm. it's like accelerating. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're getting Super Bowl. Yeah. You're doing something extremely right. It's not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is not like some like, yeah. oh, let's get the old heads to come back. No, yeah. when you do a Super Bowl, it's like, hey, they're tapping the person who's doing the best of what they're doing at that time or mm-hmm. in that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and and accelerating and evolving. So I mean, again, I, I don't know all the stats on yeah. his release or the numbers or um, but it's just in general, like with, to answer your question and and not even on the sake of, of Usher, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we just using that example. Anything. Um, again, it looked like success to me, but also mm-hmm. people work with whom they're comfortable with, from whom they've had success with, from whom they, you know what I mean? Because I wouldn't look at it any differently if you know. Jay decided to do an album tomorrow and use Pharrell, or if Snoop decided to do an album tomorrow and use Dre, or you know what I mean, like whoever people have that connection with, I don't, you know, of course they can go to the newer generation of producers or you know production houses that are killing it, but also you know there's again this goes back to what I said earlier about that that connection that mm-hmm. some people have and the um and the compatibility that they share. And you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and that's where that kind of magic comes out a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure if Justin Timberlake was working on an album tomorrow, he's going to tap Timberlake. He's going to tap Pharrell. He's going to tap mm-hmm. people that he's had real success with and that are obviously still doing their thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, JD and them, obviously, they still... JD, that whole little crew, JD, um, um, John Tay, mm-hmm. Brian Michael, mm-hmm. like, they're, yeah. 
But they've never gone. They're still, they got yeah. mm-hmm. money loans. They yeah, got, they, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. if I'm muster, I'm definitely going to tap. And again, I'm not making it about him. Yeah. Uh, Cause mm-hmm. I'm just, was trying to answer that. But I mean, you know, yeah. sometimes people also, again, not him, but legacy artists, sometimes they're scared to tap in with newer right. Man, like they don't know what it's gonna be. They don't know if maybe they could hold on. It does. It's not necessarily a thing where it's like, ah, oh, they they knew they don't they don't have it what it takes. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. no, it could be the opposite way. It could be like, damn, I would, I would love to work with you know Metro Boomin or mm-hmm. Take Heat, but I don't even know if they're interested in working with me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they know about me. I don't know if they're you know what I'm saying would feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. So you got to look at it from all perspectives and not mm-hmm. just like the legacy artists may be not tapping into them mm-hmm. through not knowing or through ignorance or through yeah. something like that. Yeah. It could be the other way around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. For sure. No, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That makes, that makes sense. But, um, but definitely, you know, um, I know you got a busy schedule, so. No, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're okay, good. okay. All right. Do you, My brother, feel, like, like, make sure. yeah, do nah. you feel like it's a, um, a, a, like, do you feel like it's a lack in pushing the mu- music forward or do you feel like production is in a good spot? In, in music, like, how do you feel about like the? I mean, man, it's 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 hard to answer those questions, right? Because only because, and when I say that, I mean like music, um, your taste and what you know, who you like, and it's all relative, man. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like people that are working with producers that let's just say maybe you don't think I'm just making this up that maybe you don't think are super dope or as dope as producers from before them or as creative, whatever the case may be, the people that are working with them now, they do feel that way, right? Like the the younger artist working with the young producer, he feels like Missy working with Timbaland or he or she feels like, you know, like I said, Snoop working with Dre or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever, that's how they feel. So it's hard for us, you know, again, we all have our opinion, Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I'm the wrong one to ask. I really do believe, you know, music, it's just as good. It, you got to really open your ear, right? And you got to really listen to it, you know, uh, unbiased or uh, yeah. unbiased, yeah, unbiased, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or unbiased. Yeah, definitely. Ear. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times people listen to things, especially if you're older, you're listening it with that same ear mm-hmm. that you listen to the stuff you love. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's not going to be maybe Tribe Called Quest when you first heard it. Mm-hmm. Or it's not going to be, you know, Aaliyah when you first heard it. Or it may not be, you know, Joe to see when you first heard. it may not be that for you, but for them, the people who are listening to that now, yes, that may when they hear Frank Ocean, they may hear what we heard in this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When they hear Miguel, when they hear Chris Brown, or when they hear I, I know I do, I feel that way. Mm-hmm. But again, everybody's not gonna feel that way. So I'm always critical and I'm always trying to protect the younger generation in mm-hmm. what the us with the older generation, and I'm obviously older than y'all, but mm-hmm. from what the older generation feels about the music before us. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. it's relative. And I'm not saying that it's the same, it's equal. That's not even for me to put out there. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is that they have just as much good stuff, but again, it's relative because it's, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's their thing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. We could go back and forth all day if we think blah, blah, blah is better than blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's opinion based. Some things though, I feel in music are pretty like, I can't say factual, but it's like majority, it's the majority vote of the room, right? It's like mm-hmm. when you say Stevie Wonder is one of the best musicians, singers ever to grace life. Mm-hmm. That's true. I don't yeah. even care if you don't like Stevie Wonder. Yeah. What I'm saying is his credibility, yeah. his catalog, yeah. his production, his singing, yeah. his melodies, his his 50, 60 year run mm-hmm. proves, you know what I'm saying? Again, mm-hmm. it may not be what you think, your opinion, but you're not going to argue with me about certain of those things. And I just feel like, yes, there have been older past generations who kind of hold that bar higher mm-hmm. than let's just say now. Mm-hmm. Right? That doesn't mean that the stuff now is not good. Right. I'm just saying mm-hmm. it was a different. I, I was talking to my brother one time in LA. Um, and and we was, you know, we were talking about competitive in, uh, competitiveness in the music business. Yeah. And it was different, right? When you thought about back then, when Stevie Wonder came out, he had to worry about 
Smokey Robinson, you know, Lionel Richie, the Supremes, Marvin Gaye, mm-hmm. the Jackson Five, which the Jackson Five is a six-year-old kid singing better than us. Mm-hmm. Like, that was your competition. Again, not taking anything away from mm-hmm. anybody now. What I'm saying mm-hmm. is that's hard. That's very hard to, it's the same in basketball. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, they, you have the same thing now in a way, but I mean, like, it's hard when you're like, damn, I got to, Bird is over here. Mm-hmm. Magic is over here. Then Jordan, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, if, if that bar is set higher, of course it's going to be harder to compare to. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And by the way, it's not it's not always going to happen. It's going to be like, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean right now you're going to have all those great artists. You know what I'm saying? But the next week after us, that may be the situation. Right. You know what I'm saying? But different time. No, I, I think it's, I think that's, that's the best way to put it is, is a different time. Yeah. I try not to be like, you know, old, have an old, old ear. Like, you know, yeah, I, trying, in our, in our discourse, I was the one that was like, nah, but you know, trying yeah. to have some grace because I'm in the trenches with these new producers. I have producers mm-hmm. myself. It's a yeah. totally different game. It's a different culture. But I had the argument of like, yo, challenge yourself a little more. You know, Pharrell has yeah. a whole discourse where he's like, yo, like learn how to play an instrument. You know what I'm saying? Learn music theory. Yeah. Like, because a lot of these kids nowadays, it's it's there's click producers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Lot, like they open it's their, lacking their, musicality. Yeah, a lot yeah, of musicality. Yeah. Even though it's still musical and it still sounds, you know what I mean? It still sounds fire. And there's a lot of new stuff that I yeah. I ride to, but it, you can definitely tell when it lacks musicality. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, that's just. But again, right? Who who are the young producers around? Right? What I'm what I'm saying is, while I agree with you guys mm-hmm. in a sense, mm-hmm. what I'm also trying to make the point of is, if that young producer is only around other producers who are making music, you know, digitally mm-hmm. and using programs, which again, there's nothing wrong with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're that's using, the, it's easier, yeah. it's faster, it's right. That's what they're using. It's a big difference when, again, back then, when, you know, DeBarge was going to this person's house or this person was going to see Earth, Wind & Fire, everybody had a band. Mm-hmm. So now I got a band with 12 people who could pay, play every instrument. Mm-hmm. You had five backup singers. You had, and that was everybody. Yeah. Whether it was Marge, whether it was fucking, like I said, um, Earth, Wind & Fire, mm-hmm. the um, Isley Brothers, yeah. like <laughs> no matter who it is, they had a whole Yeah, not to mention most of, the, most of them right? came from the church. Yeah. And then there's musicality yeah, exactly. in the church, which is different nowadays. We ain't coming from the church into the music industry the way it was back then. We're coming, we're coming <laughs> you know, from the basement. Coming from the streets. Coming we're from the, coming from right where yeah, you guys are. So the producer comes table. in there. He's not, the average producer's not coming in. It's like, <laughs> where's the band? Where's the trumpet band? Where's right, the right, right. people who are more creative yeah. and who want to have their tracks and musically more defined and in depth? Yeah, they're going to be like, damn, this is dope, but it'll be crazier. Instead of, instead of using the sample, or I get a trumpet player to mm-hmm. play over the sample, yep. or I get this piano player to, you know what I mean? That, but that's all also, right, mm-hmm. on the person. Some mm-hmm. people rap one, two, three, you and me, and some mm-hmm. people have triple entendres. Mm-hmm. Rappers have access to the same words, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gate Z, Little Baby, these guys don't have a secret dictionary <laughs> that's like <laughs> making them more special than, no, every right. artist has access to the same vocabulary, the same dictionary, the same whatever the case may be. So it's like, it's up to you how deep you want to get. Yeah. When you're in class, hey, teacher's like, need a three-page three, three page essay. You know what I mean? You can do the three pages and stop. Mm-hmm. But there's a kid who overachieves and does five pages, yeah. mm-hmm. goes more in depth, and kills it and wins with honors while this kid mm-hmm. got a B plus, which is fine for him. Mm-hmm. So again, you know, the kid producing on the program and he's selling beats and he's making 30, 40, 50 grand a track. Mm-hmm. He's not going to sit there and be like, yeah, but if I had a band, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. you know what I mean? When he's not even, doesn't have access to it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Up like that. You made a great point. We came up in the church. We mm-hmm. came up around bands. We mm-hmm. came up around. Yeah. So it's it's a totally different thing. It was a more man? musical environment at yeah. the time. Versus, and that's, and I agree with you there because I'm not, I'm not against dolls and I'm not against technology coming in and moving things forward. And I'm not against trying. Like, I'm not against people not knowing how to play the keys and being a producer or not knowing how to play musical notes and stuff. I think yeah, you could totally But you should learn. That. You should be ambitious I, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, exactly. you, should know, exactly. you should learn your craft. Yeah. But yes. I just think there's a lack of... I don't, I don't know if there's a lack of it because you can dig deep on all these platforms and find any so- kind of sounding music. But yeah. it just seems like the people who want to, like, come in and say, hey, 
I want to create a new sound or I want to push, I'm going to stand on this sound and eventually this sound is going to take over and people, I feel like that's more rarer in today's time. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree with you and I'll put it like this. There's a lack of ambition to grow or to evolve or to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, right? If I'm a kid, I'm producing, I got these three, I got Yachty on my on speed dial. I got, you know what I'm saying, NBA young. I could get them. They give me my tracks. They give me 25 a track. Mm -hmm. They hit my royalties is crazy. I ain't use no sample. Mm -hmm. I'm killing it. You can't really sit that person down who's 22, killing it, successful, making more money than your parents, parents, parents made. Mm -hmm. You can't really sit there and be like, hey, why don't you be more yeah. ambitious? Why don't you want to? I'm not saying you can't give the advice. You yeah. can. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is for them, you know that. Like, you know, there's going to be a little bit of stubbornness there. It's like, why? This yeah. works. Yeah. Why would I not go and get four other people? Even though it may make the sound way more incredible, mm -hmm. but this sound works. I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid for myself. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to pay nobody. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing my thing. What you talking about? Yeah, oh, exactly. hey, paying. Now, yeah. now it turns into <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you're hating. Right. So I'm like, no. Yeah, right. I just want you to. Yeah. But I do agree. I want to make a point, man. I, like, I, I love the point he made. It's like, there's no ambition to want to learn. Because like, I do have a pet peeve. When I hear young, younger artists be like, well, I don't know about Big Daddy Kane and, mm. you know, Biggie. That was y'all era. Yeah. I don't, I don't care. That's not anybody's era, first of all. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are people who came in that era. I didn't grow up in the 60s. Right. I didn't, I didn't grow up around Motown, but I know who Motown is. Exactly. I love 99.9% .9 of the artists on Motown. Mm -hmm. I love the whole Philadelphia sound. I didn't grow up in Philadelphia. I wasn't around when those guys were making Teddy Pendergrass albums. Mm -hmm. and. I, but I do my history. I do my research. And I'm. I, this music was incredible. So... There, I, I'm with you. There's no excuse mm -hmm. to want to learn your craft. And go to Tyler, the creator. I bet you he could recite any and every sure. mm -hmm. loop, melody, sure. rapper, singer. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are certain people who study the craft, no matter what age they are. And that mm -hmm. they didn't grow up. He could probably recite every Rakim and Big Daddy Kane verse, as well as a Pharrell or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Or a, Yachty verses because people study their craft and they genuinely want to know. And all I'm saying is that everybody doesn't have that thirst for knowledge or history. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just saying that it's unfortunate, but it doesn't make them not good or not. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody it's, doesn't want to learn. And and uh, it's interesting because um, like I I had a conversation with Tizo, um a couple weeks ago. He's like my favorite artist right now, like uh -huh. hands down, super creative, very, yeah. very like, he stands on his look, his image, yep. you know what yep. I'm saying? And sonically amazing, like absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. But we were talking about some of his records and we were like, bro, like this reminds me of this. Like I was in, I was, yeah. um, we were in the room with Wale. He was like, yo, this sounds like Arrested Development. And he's like, yeah. what's that? And he played a Mr. Wendell compared mm -hmm. to Neighbor, and he had yeah. never heard mm. Mr. Wendell. He had never heard it. So it That's was true. like, so it was interesting, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but having said that, you could tell that he is tapped in, like, he knows the culture of Beaumont, Texas. Like, he knows yeah. the music scene from back in the day. Like, you know, he did covers of, like, old records from, you know, um, from back in the days and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just it only enhances your, your music, right? Yeah. Because you have yeah. like a broader palette, like you can tap into different, different sounds. Yeah. Like there's, um, the kid Fredo that uh, he does like old doo-wop records. Yeah. Like he'll flip yeah, yeah. do And I'm like, bro, this shit is crazy. Like yeah. I saw, uh, I was looking at a post the other day and it was talking about all these records that he flipped that, um, that he sampled. And I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, like, Sonically is incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it goes back to like the movie Beautiful Mind. Like there's no original thought. Like we learn everything at mm -hmm. some point. So going back to this point, like if you just learn it, it'll give you a longer trajectory and more things to be right. creative from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Within that. So yeah. take artists like Tizo, you, you can also tell. hope that yeah. people grow during their career. What do you normally do? You know what I mean? You, you yeah. hopefully mm -hmm. you usually excel, you usually start to evolve. You meet new people. You start to travel. You start to go to different places, different countries. Yeah. You pick up other sounds, other you know little tricks of other production or producers, or or like you said, uh, we said earlier, we start to think maybe, damn, 
I should add a piano to this. So I should add a string section. This might be mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they eventually learn how to enhance themselves and their own music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what we do for, you know what I'm saying? Nah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely want to, you know, um, I mean, push the music forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, a lot of times now yourself. when I get in the studio with, with these new artists and stuff and I, I'll come up with like, hey, man, we should put keys here. I'll put this here and stuff. It's like I'll have to pull back because sometimes, man, they're not interested in that stuff. They'll yeah. they'll kind of be nervous to like, oh, we're going to do too much. And then they're not yeah. going to be feeling me. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm-hmm. going to take it too far from where I was already at. Like, I want to stay yeah. right here. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's kind of it works a, for them. Yeah. 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 It's kind of a yeah. weird. And you don't want to, you know what I mean? You run off. You want to listen to your bass. So yeah. it's kind of a, a weird place to be in within that. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, you got to, I mean, you know, you got to have You also have to be fearless, line. though. Right? Yeah. You have to be fearless. Yeah. You talked about Tizo earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fearless. Fearless yeah. for sure. Fearless sure. style, dressing, music. Well, you know what I mean? Like it, it's all you have to be fearless. You have to be Andre 3000 was fearless. Mm-hmm. You know, CeeLo, fearless. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of Kanye, obviously, fearless. Like mm-hmm. there's so many fearless artists that in with everything. You know what I mean? Like, and it's funny because some people talk about the way some of the artists dress now, but it ain't that much different from what. How Africa been bothering them dressed? Man, you go back to uh, you go back to the video with the message. Yeah, is it? You know, they had, they had cowboy boots and leather white leather pants with spikes. And that was the style. They had body suits on. Cowboy yeah. like, the style. Leather, leather body like, suit. Yeah, it's what it was. And by the way, yeah. majority of people were dressed like that. It wasn't yeah. funny or weird to them or nothing. But right. now you do something like that, and it's like, yo, this weirdo. It's yeah. like. How was it with you know what I mean? Like And there's certain stuff that wasn't understood when, when we were kids that yeah. the rappers were doing even in that time period in the in the mid two thousands and early two yeah. thousands and yeah. stuff. It was still some oh why are y'all doing that? What's up the, the bling era, you know yeah. what I mean? So that's always yeah. gonna be the, that's always gonna be the case. But um man, Lenny, I appreciate your time, my brother. Uh, uh, Thank you, man. Means, appreciate y'all. This man. means more than yeah, you know. I hope I was been able to give some insight yeah, or more insight. than more than enough insight for sure. And um I just want you to if you can I mean, it might be cliche, but if you could just kind of leave the people with with some words of advice, people coming up in the game, trying to find their way. Hey man, um, I'm just gonna put it out there, yeah, man. Cliche yeah. advice is is good advice, still, y'all. Just yeah. before he <laughs> get the advice, man. I know what, what makes it cliche is that it always sounds general because uh-huh. it's like you know, there's no formula, right? Exactly. There's no yeah. do this, this, and this, yeah. and you're yeah, gonna and make you're it. it applies. Believe it in it. yourself, yeah. and you're gonna go far. Like, yeah. you, know, like, you, like yeah. you want the specific yeah. advice from me, like yeah. that, that yeah. advice for everybody. Yeah. Tell me how I'm gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that's hard. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like, yo, you gotta just set your goals. You gotta also set your boundaries, right? Mm. Like having a goal this big, but then also having boundaries to keep the people away from you that are going to stop you from achieving that, you know, surround yourself with the right people, man. I've, you know, I've been in this game almost like 30 years and, you know, I've, I've had a lot of the same people with me. Thank God I've been with the same crew for that Mm -hmm. long Mm -hmm. on the outside. You know, there's been different little friend groups or different people that you want to put people around have people around you that share the same common interests, the same common goals and the same common ambition and drive. You know what I mean? Mm Because if not, they really just become distractions, man. So you got to, you got, and even as far as I am seasoned and experienced as I am, and my brother knows me right here that, you know what I mean? I try to do right by people. Like mm-hmm. I still go through it. So it's like, you, you have to just kind of like make sure you have the right people around you, you know, mm-hmm. again, and, and just, you can really achieve what you want to, but it takes real hustle. Mm-hmm. It takes real ambition. It takes real drive. It takes real determination. Mm-hmm. And, and real hunger, man. And real. fearlessness, like he said a minute ago. Hey, you gotta be fearless. Fearlessness, man. Because fearlessness, yeah. I talked about yeah. that when That's we important. kicked off when we kicked off the season. I talked about a lot of things that I'm the way that I moved, like a lot of it was rooted in fear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um and and that's important, yeah. man. Like, you know, standing on you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like the boundaries thing. That's why when yeah. you just said yeah, boundaries, boundaries. I, it took me to it because I was like I'm still afraid, I'm still afraid sometimes to do interviews. Like, exactly. you know, I don't do them that much, yeah. but it's like the last one I did with Chase B, that's my brother. Yeah. I, I don't have to worry about no weird shit. Right. You're my brother. Right. Like, I don't have to worry about no weird shit. Right. Which is like, people, I, I have that fear of like, oh, they're going to ask me stuff about Jay. They're going to ask me. Uh, right, this, right. You no know, yeah. stuff for you. I don't want to be one of these something. people on the internet yeah. talking about other people. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, exactly. I'm not, I'm exactly. here to because try to help and give some advice or just try to give some insight mm-hmm. on my journey mm-hmm. and answer the questions that you have. But, you know, that's a fear too. So, like, yeah. you got to kind of be fearless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. Well, man, thank you so much, my brother. Thank really y'all, appreciate man. Appreciate you, man. Y'all. Be appreciate safe it. out here, man. Yeah. All right. All right.
Peace, love, my man. Right. Yo, man, my brother Lenny. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been knowing Lenny for years. Um, you know, always, you know, always giving good insight, always good, good advice. You know what I'm saying? Like he's been in the game so long, but he's one of the most humble people. Uh, you know, and if you did your research on him and his accolades are incredible, but you would never know. Like if you knew him personally, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't he doesn't brag. He's not one of those like, you know, weird industry types that, you know, are too cool for school. Um, and uh, we've, you know, I've been fortunate to have a relationship with him over the years of being able to tap in. Um, and uh, man, solid as they come, man. So definitely appreciate Lenny. And uh, man, appreciate you guys tuning in. This is Hidden Hands. Let's go. Cruz and Trav signing off. Yes, sir. Check y'all in the next one. Another episode. Yes, sir. Peace.